Hey guys, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to a napkin journal tutorial. I absolutely love this page. Now, I'm showing you this page because after I finished this art journal page, I had lots of leftover paint, and that's where this art journal page's story goes. So I grabbed my brayer and another page from my 9x12 Canson Mixed Media journal, and I've taken the pages out of this journal and I'm brayering on all the colors. I've got Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, deep violet, Naples yellow, and I'm just putting that on. And at this point, I had absolutely no idea of the page, the happy page that was going to evolve. There was no plan. I was just saving paint putting this on a background to save for another day. Now, normally I I tape off the edges, especially when I keep the coils on, but since I've taken the coils off, I'm going to experiment with putting the paint right to the end. So I'm going over this with these colors. Brayering gives some texture, some interest going and I typically go up or down or side to side, straight lines, no diagonals. If the colors are too bright, you can add a little bit of white, then add colors. It's kind of a dance between those colors. And you get this very distinct modeled look as well as the texture. So we are starting with a brayered background. Now, when you're putting on the background, the colors, if they are across from each other on the color wheel, you might want to avoid putting them on when they're wet because that may mix to make a color that you do not like. If that happens, you can just put white on and keep brayering till you like what you see in front of you. Here I'm putting the deep violet after the white because I like that violet color and the teal. I want more of that than that Naples yellow. So I grab my Daisy Cluster stencil and I grab cobalt teal paint and I'm giving that a try because I, I want to brighten the page. It's not exactly giving me the look that I want but I'm sampling doing a little bit more of it just to see what I'm getting and I just am not happy. So I switch my plan to using white. So I'm going over that and I'm liking that better. This is a crafter's workshop stencil and I believe it's called Daisy Cluster. And I'm liking that look. Now remember, I'm making a background here. I've wanted this stencil for a very, very long time. And it was one of the first ones that I grabbed from my latest shipment of TCW stencils to give a spin. And you, I definitely will be using this in other ways because I want to play with the different techniques and see the different looks I can get using the same stencil. I think there's lots of opportunity here. So I'm turning it, I'm keep holding that stencil down and just applying the white throughout. Now there's going to be a lot of white on this page. And I'm putting layers of white paint on, keeping my sponge fairly dry so it doesn't seep underneath. Just adding more white, get it more opaque white. Now, this is not all I'm going to use for this stencil because I'm going to use the stencil in another way. So one, it's to stencil with on the background to create part of the background. And we're going to use it also to develop some focal points. So keep watching. I love when we can use a stencil in a multitude of ways. That makes a great purchase. So there we have this Daisy Cluster 
page. We've got this purple and teal coming through and I'm loving the background, but I admit I really didn't know where to go with this. And in fact, it sat for a while. I grab out some focal images, some napkins, thinking, you know, the ones that have the same color, what could go. Inspiration didn't hit. I walked away. I spent the, slept the night. And then I found this napkin. It's called Welcome to Paradise. It's from Ninny's Napkins. And you can access link to her store in the description box below. She also sells TCW six inch stencils. So you can check those out as well as the sentiments. Now, the first thing when you napkin, you want to remove the two plies. And I use a piece of tape to help that process. Then I'm going to water cut the portions of this napkin that I want. Now I picked this napkin. It has these daisies on it, these flowers. It's the same color as my, with some of the colors in that background, as well as the floral motifs that are present. So I thought that that was a perfect, perfect match. And that's why I selected this one over some of the others. Now, when I'm water cutting, I'm not exactly always sure how much of it I want. So I water cut the bigger one, and then I can always fine tune it later on. So what I'm going to do is water cut all the elements from this napkin in the same way you see me doing here. And I'm just putting a little bit of water on this liner brush. And then just setting it on the background. Now, I may not use everything that I'm water cutting out right now. What isn't used is just going to go into my stash to be used at another point in time. But I find when I'm setting up the composition, I need to have the options available. And then I play, I lay them on my page and I play with it and I figure out what I want. And I need to have the actual item right there in order to addition them. So there are the two birds and the rest of the items that I water cut. So now I'm going to place them on the background. Now here are some leftover pieces. I'm not throwing these out. These are gonna make great collage papers for other projects. Now look at, the, I place this on the background and you can see the daisy stencil through it. Now I don't want to see that where I have, where I'm using these. So what I'm going to do is I am going to glue these elements onto copy paper. And that way, whatever's in the background will not show through. I'm using my Liquitex Basics Matte Medium. And I'm applying a lot and using a brush, a flat brush that is fairly soft because I don't want to rip the napkin. It gets very fragile when you wet it. And I'm starting at the center and moving out. There are some wrinkles. I haven't perfected it. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please go to Instagram and start following me at Creative Katie. And you can see how this brightens the images. And when I glue this down onto the background, you will not see the background peeking through. So I'm putting, I'm gluing down whatever elements I think I'm going to use. Because right now I haven't 100% decided what will be used. But if they're not used here, they will be used on another project. And when it comes to napkins, especially focal images, if you glue them down onto a piece of paper, it gives it a little bit more support and makes them stronger and it's easier to store. Love the watercolor effect of this napkin. 
Now I wanted to make some more solid colors, so I just painted copy paper in the colors that were in the background. And the one magenta it wasn't quite the right shade. So I have bright aqua, Prussian blue, and deep violet. And I'm bringing back that daisy cluster stencil and I'm tracing around several of the sizes, shapes of this daisy. And then I'm going to cut them out. Now I'm putting all three papers together and tracing ones, cutting three. So I'm going to get three of the different sizes and shapes that I end up tracing. And I don't show all of this, I show you a little bit more. And I'm just cutting these out. I like the idea, because the background is very mottled, I want some solid color. I could have used gel prints, but again, some of my gel prints have a little too much pattern. And I didn't, since the background is busy, I didn't want that. So as soon as I threw that on that background, it was like, yes, this is going to work. Tracing different sizes and shapes. And again, I don't know right now how many of these I need. I don't, I haven't figured it out. So I am going to cut more than I think I'm going to need because then I can play with it and come up with a great composition. And what isn't used goes in the stash and will show up on some other page. So after they're all cut out, I loaded them on the paper and I absolutely love it. We've got those colors. It looks, yeah, even just like this, it would be beautiful. I play with the orientation, with the vertical orientation, and then with the landscape orientation. And I decide what I'm going to use. I need to decide now what sentiment. So I went to my sentiment binder and flip through i went to sentiment pack number one and there were several in there and i went to my stash binder and i'll put a link to those videos and i'm cutting out some and figuring out where i want the sentiment going before i start gluing something down i'm trying to decide where i want that because it may change where i'm putting the all these images. I love how the you see the daisies in the background, the stenciled background, and then you have the daisies that I cut out from the stencil template as well. Now I did shrink some of these sentiments down. They come in one in a PDF. But I do show you in a video, and you can check out that video, how to take the PDF sentiment file and shrink it with your printer settings so that you can get it whatever size works on the page you are using. So now that I have the placement, and I have a picture of this in case I lose that, and I'm gluing down what needs what's underneath first and then what's on top. So I'm going at, you know, step by step. This is going on top of this. So this has to go now, but then that blue daisy on the left is underneath the bird as well. So I'm just fine tuning placements. Now I could have put less of flowers on top and more of the background would have shown. Again, that's a personal choice. No right or wrong. I used a couple of the watercolor ones from the napkin in the middle of some of those larger, right there, flowers. And I like that, it just makes everything work together a little better.
It was so funny because the night before when I was trying to figure out what I was going to put on this background, I was just frustrated. And then I woke up in the morning and I had the idea and it just flowed. So don't be afraid to hit pause, walk away, do something else, come back to it, you know, go through your stash, throw things on top of it. You, one idea leads to another idea. This napkin gave me some ideas that I wouldn't have had. So everything's got a purpose. And there is no set timeline. Sometimes I have backgrounds that sit for a while. And here, I, you know, even at this stage, I'm moving things around and saying, okay, do I like this better? Sometimes I take a picture of it and look at it and see what do I like? How do I like it? I definitely think I'm going to use this stencil again and cut out gel prints and do some collage work. Then I grab this stencil. It's called Posies in the Row. And I'm putting some daisies on some of the solid colored ones. And I got the idea, if you look at the napkin, there are little white daisies on the napkin. So I'm just kind of playing up an element that's already there. And I only do about three of that. I add in the blue one in the bottom right-hand corner as well later in the video. And there's different sized little flowers. I love this motif. I was so glad to get this stencil. Then I decide I'm going to put some centers on these. I am loving the look, so I go back and I'm putting, making centers on all of them. I put the sentiment there because I don't want as much of the teal because I've got that the birds with the teal right there. But I did want a little bit of the teal in the flowers just to tie everything together. So this stencil that was called the the daisy cluster there's also one called flower frenzy from the crafters workshop that has a lot of uh, florals as well that you could do the same thing now i've grabbed my angle brush and i'm using the floating acrylic technique and i'm shading with black acrylic paint all around all the flowers and I do not show you all of this because it's a lengthy process. I love doing it. I think it really makes it pop. Just adds that detail and you can add, you could use black, you could use white for highlights. You could also use colors and that will kind of gives a bit of a glaze. Now I'm using the makeup sponge and black acrylic paint to frame the page. Now I've taken these pages out of my 9 by 12 Canson Mixed Media and I show how to do that in the video with that I showed you at the beginning, the, the page in the beginning. And the reason I took it out is because it just makes it easier to work on a flat surface instead of in the coils. Now those daisies on the napkin have a yellow dot in the middle. So I grab my stylus and my yellow paint and I'm putting a yellow dot in the middle of this motif. Again, I'm taking hints from the napkin art, marrying the what I've done with the napkin and making it all work together. And that little bit of yellow, again, ties in with that little bit of yellow that's in the background and on the napkin. And you want to have those elements working together makes a very cohesive page. Just edging the sentiment that I've chosen, every moment matters. I could have just not put a sentiment here as well. 
And then I decide I'm going to put it at an angle. Just seemed to work for this page. I can't tell you how happy I am with how this page turns out. I love the colors. I love the flowers. I love the layering from the stencil in the background. The napkin. It's just everything worked together. And when that happens, it just, it's great. So the colors here that I use that work so well, you've got bright aqua, deep violet, and Prussian blue with white and a little bit of black. So, and then the yellow, little highlights of yellow. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you give this a try using a stencil that you have in this fashion in a background or as a tracer that you can turn into a template and use as focal images. Give me a thumbs up, share this with your creative friends, join my Facebook group, Art Journaling and Mixed Media Creations. Until next time, let's get creative.